having more free time allows you to put your energy into different things it's not easy to make money so yeah i'd like to think it's responsible for a lot of my discipline as <laughs> Not, yeah trader az trader as is what a z fellas um yeah. what's it kind of, all right we we just um we did a little bit of uh troubleshooting and stuff so this is uh it's an interesting start but i'm i'm glad to i'm glad to have you here i'm interested to see i'm excited to see where we we take this conversation um so welcome dude what's up thank you i guess i'm water to be here, man. pleasure to be here so you're okay so you're a trader right got your own um you got your own brand and all of that stuff um what is the yeah what is the what is the brand about right what what is it that you're trying to what are you trying to do um i guess just showcase showcase the talent more mm. so educate and help people um when i when i first started um I got into trading from uh, someone that went to my sixth form, so I guess the same college as me. And uh, my brother got into it and he was profitable. But I remember when when I first sort of started, there was a lot of mistakes I was making. The same things that I knew now, I never knew back then. And when I was uh, profitable, I remember I had a lot of people like asking me, oh, how do you get into it? How do you get into it? How do you get into it? And the sort of standard thing to say is oh go through baby pips and go through elliot wave theory and all of that kind of stuff and it's like i did that stuff and it was just mm. a massive waste of time for me anyway um so instead of like going through heap it helping people individually one by one by one by having a brand and having like even services whether it be free or paid it kind of just skips the things that people don't really need to to to, to see mm. or it simplifies it at least so 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 simplify kind of it, yeah. basically right simplify and and scale your reach too right so simplify yep. and scale your reach it's it's funny there's a good amount of there's a good amount of people that i've had on here and it's and it's even even tristan i i think um is of that mind of there's so much noise yeah, there's so much noise, right? Like you, you're, 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 you have all of these things together. Man, I got people hitting me up on Discord. You, you have all of these things on. Uh, um, <laughs> this is supposed to be part of the checklist. <laughs> uh, and but there's so much noise. But then it's not just because because when you find, let's say you find something like Elliot Theory and it works, right? It's it's a lot of steps to get from. Like this is the information that you're getting and then you honing into how much of that information is pertinent or, or necessary for you to get to where you want to get at. Does that make sense? And then, yeah, on course, course. but that's not the only thing that you have to do. It's also a minefield of scammers, right? So you have to navigate yep. scammers and also the confusion of you just like, how, like, how, how do I even get there? So it's, it's, um, it, it it seems to be a, a running theme with people that put them like Sardar. You said that you had a, or Sardar, I, I know it's Riz. Um, he, he also has a, has a program and it was, and it was of that same uh, mentality. It's like, there's a lot of noise in the system. How do we simplify this to, 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 but why do you, why do you feel that you, why do you feel that pressure to do that? Because a lot of other people just become profitable and then it's like, okay, I'm profitable. Let me live my life. Like what makes you want to, help i don't i don't feel mm. a pressure Compelled? to do it um, compulsion no not compulsion either just something yeah, i like but... to do i guess yeah. um so it I calls to you yeah more it so calls to I enjoy you. it yeah like i yeah i enjoy it mm. i enjoy it more so why, why why do you think you enjoy that um i don't know i guess like i've mm. been through quite a lot i'm quite a humble person um I enjoy things like charity, so I don't know. I guess I guess it can be a attribute mm, to so that. So being maybe. of service. So you're going okay. I understand. 
So, all right. So that's the, that's the social media aspect of it. That's what your, okay. That's what your, what your goal is, is to help people out, to scale that help to um, give people more simplicity. So you said Elliot waves. Is that, is that what you currently trade or, or what? No. So that was what I was, when I was first told, uh, uh, when I was first introduced to trading, that's the yeah. stuff I was going through. I know people can make it profitable and different yeah. things work for different people. But I was just using that as an example of something that didn't work for me. So I went through a lot of things that didn't work and then found something that did work. So the way I sort of approach helping, teaching, mentoring, whatever you want to call it, is near enough close to how mm. I had my journey. It's just everything from the path that I decided mm. to take Sounds. that is simplified so you don't need to you don't need to take in all of the irrelevant information. And what was some of that irrelevant information? Why do you think Elliot Waves didn't work for you? Uh, I'm not too sure, to be honest. I just, You know when oh, something yeah, just doesn't yeah. click with you? I, I guess that's probably what it was. So, like, I'm very simple in my trading, like, my strategy now. It's, mm. it's very simple. Two time frames, three time frames, and kind of a rinse What time frames are those? Ooh, the 12 hour, the one the hour. 12 hour dude i recently started um shout out to tristan tristan's been putting me on the 12 hour man and i've been loving it dude i've been loving it so Brother, yeah yeah super it's super clean. clean and it's and it's real close to the daily um and you can still you can see those structures of the daily and the um and the weekly too not as much but but it's yeah i like it i like it a lot too um so so 12 hour and one hour so 12 hours for you to get like market flow or whatever and then one hour is more for entry how does how does that work ah. literally like that literally <laughs> like that it's just fire yeah it's uh it's super fire it's you spend less time looking at the chart right bro it's, it's literally the perfect balance so obviously you've only got two h12 closes a day so you don't need to spend too much time on the 12 hour and then when you're going down to the one hour Again, it's every one candle's hour, one hour, yeah. so you're not sitting there glued to the charts. So you can go about and do your free time and stuff. And that, for me, was like a big thing when coming to trading. So when I when I first started, I was more H4, yeah. M15 focused, and I found that took up a lot of my time. Um, and the only reason, really, well, mm -hmm. I say the only reason, one of the main reasons I'm in trading is mm -hmm. because of the freedom it gives you. So now I've got a much better work-life yeah. balance. Yeah, because it slows I you guess. down. It's it, I was who the hell was I talking? It might have even been to T. Um, I, I was telling him how I think a lot of people are they get drawn to the lower time frame because there's such a whipsaw of emotions that it's like okay, you feel the pain and you feel the fear now, and like it's gone pretty fast. Like you either take profit, like like there's finality of it. It gets closed pretty quickly, right? Ver yeah, yeah the, the exactly. So you feel if you feel pain, if you feel greed, it's it's for a, a, a smaller amount of time or like it's uh, it's it's finalized quicker versus in the 12 hour. You might be sitting in that trade like my average trade is like two days, two days and some change. Right. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of times where I'm in trades for multiple days, but Chill. you learn to yeah. just be patient. <laughs> you, know, you, you don't yeah. need to be stressed for the whole time, whereas like. When you're on the M5 trading NFP, yeah. it, uh, you're gonna get wrecked you know a lot I mean? of times too, right? Yeah. yeah, potentially, yeah, potentially. But um, you're a lot, you're a lot. More, I feel a lot more comfortable when I'm uh, when I've got oh breathing when room. I've got yeah uh, a lot yeah, more breathing room as breathing well. Room. Yeah, yeah, we're on the same we're on that same vibe. Yeah, but, um, there is, but the, it it um it definitely comes off the back of work because in order for you to get into a trade in those time frames you have to really trust in your method. Like you had to have worked through all of that shit in order for you to be able to just disconnect from it. You know, it's like, I know that this shit is going to work the way that it's going to need to work. And working doesn't mean profit that you're going to make money on that one. Right. It doesn't mean that you're going to win on that one. Like you're, or, or am I assuming that, how do you deal with that? With, with the possibility of you getting, you, you getting wrecked. It's just risk management, bro. Yeah. Every like, as long as you're risk managed and you've got enough data to back your strategy, then there's we, nothing, there's to, nothing worry to worry about. 
Yeah, there's literally nothing to worry about, too. It's like, okay, you leave it there. If it goes to take profit, goes to take profit. If I get stopped out, I get stopped out. It's fine. And I find that the less that you look at the chart, um, yeah, the the less that you look at the chart, the 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 less of a draw there is for you to. It becomes like a vortex, right? It becomes like a. It has like a gravity to it while you're staring at the chart, right? Bro, you're, the more you're looking at it, the more you're gonna want to do something to it. So. The more you leave it, the less, the more likely you are to remove remove the human error from. It's easier to disconnect from it. Yeah, it's it's easier to disconnect from it. But then there's that. Okay, so let's jump into that because I'll just keep on fucking harping on this shit. So if you were at four to fifteen, maybe four hours to fifteen minutes, and you noticed that you were getting pulled into the chart for too long. You didn't like it, right? Like you came to that moment that it's like, all right, this isn't what I came into this game for, right? Uh, All right. And then what was that? Like, actually, what? How did you fall on the 12? Was it from four hour to 15, four hour and 15 minutes straight to 12 hour and one hour? Or what was that transition like? It was actually from the H4 to M15. Then I started testing a few things. For example, I started testing the H1 M5. It was all to do with um, Mm. risk to reward against your strike rate. So whatever was the most profitable that gave you, I guess, the most, yeah, the the good work-life balance is what what you're going to settle on. Well, that was Mm. what it was for me. So my brother, uh, Trader ZS1, he was already trading the 12 hour. So I kind of got into it from there on the 12 hour. So I started, uh, I went back and collected stats for all of the pairs that I currently traded. And it was really, so he was good, already, so. it sounds like you just casted a spell. You said trying to swing swan. I'm like, Oh, this guy, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll probably talk to him. I'll probably talk to him at some point too. Um, but okay. So he was already trading a different time frame, is what it was. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, he, he was already trading oh. on the H12. I'm pretty sure he was one of the first to be doing it, to okay. be honest. Okay. So, that's okay. Yeah. So I just ran I ran the I ran the stats for EU, GU, gold and yeah. BTC. And yeah, it made perfect sense to, especially with the work life yeah. balance that yeah. it gives. Yeah. That's I mean, those are my best trades. I I love higher time frame uh swing trades on and and you're talking about BTC specifically on on BTC TH um so okay so you started to mess with the other time frames you messed you said one hour 15 also you had done that one hour five five. okay so you were jumping between those um and then at some point you just your brother was already on it or you were going back and forth with your brother no my brother was Mm. already on the h12 and i hadn't paid too much attention to it really um H1M5 was was working at the time as well. I didn't really, I did. There wasn't much time between four hour and fifteen and the yeah. H12. So between that time, I was kind of going through the different time frames, just looking. Oh, at what worked and what didn't. okay. So you were using that. You were using the 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 four hour as like a capsule to then play around with all this other stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I have like a base strategy, and then it was literally about finding the time frames oh, that fit. Ins- I guess. The, okay. the best together so then are are you even well you do you do hop into you do hop into the one hour so you are um you you are beholden i would imagine to the uh time of day are, are you paying attention to that at all at all like london whatever london zone and new york you, so usually you'll get the most volatility yes during like mm. london session and new york but with it doesn't being matter, the 12 right? hour it's it yeah, yeah it's not too important especially when you're in trades for like yeah. multiple days okay all right that's interesting to me um yeah you're speaking my language dude I- i'm actually yeah i'm actually picking your brain fuck the audience i'm picking it for myself too because it's uh <laughs> it's it's interesting because i just started playing around with that and it's it is a balancing act though every, every time that you okay so you get to the 12 so you're messing around with the a one the one hour and the five minute and that didn't do it for you it's like okay i'm still playing the same game um how many different time frames did you play around with it before you're like is your brother older than you oh yeah, he's one, one year, year oh so your brother's younger and he's the one that's that's pulling you into shit huh nice yeah. 
yeah. No, do you know what it was? We um we both started reselling when we was in like I college, like I guess. So that's where we first started. Yeah. It was from Yeezy. Those are Yeezys above um, you. Oh, I forgot we're not showing that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, yeah. 2016, and um, he was like, "Oh, I really yeah. like these shoes," and I was like, "Really?" And I was like, "How'd you get them?" Yeah, and it was a raffle. I won the yeah. raffle, and he didn't. So I uh, went to pick them up, and I remember someone in the store offered me 700 pound for them, and the retail yeah. was like 150, and I was only I was only That's big 17 money. at the time. Yeah. Um, so I kept the first pair, and then I oh, knew, you still kept them, like, bro? Really this guy's a fucking. I kept them. <laughs> I kept them and wore them to college, and everyone was no looking. Way. And uh, I knew there was a, I knew there was yeah. a business after that. And uh, we actually, we ended up scaling it to like nice. six figures. And it was when the margins of that mm. started to diminish that we realized there was some we needed yeah, to yeah, of go to something else. Yeah, and he got into trading. Um, I was still doing shoes as well, and then I realized when I saw how profitable it was. I'd be stupid. That's what Riz was doing well. too. Uh, yeah. He was he was he was doing shoes too. He was flipping shoes. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah, legit, yeah. dude. He was flipping shoes first, and then uh, yeah, and then he he ended up jumping onto uh, onto trading. And I think there's a couple of other people that, I, yeah, for sure. I know a couple of people and UK boys too. Yeah, because he's in London too. Um, <laughs> yeah, bro, it's definitely common because it was a risk. So shoes yeah. was a risk free business. If the if there wasn't the margins on the shoes, what yeah. do you do? Just return the shoes. You yeah. had no losses. It's impossible to yeah. lose in that business. Oh, I didn't even consider that. And then, yeah, the next sort of rotation would have been maybe going to into watches or yeah. maybe even cars, but um, it, it ended up being trading first for us. For me as well. Man, it's funny how like we all have very similar journeys like it's either like amazon fba or you're trying to like you're just yeah. trying to do some trying to get some hustle going i just can't believe you didn't i would have sold those shoes so quick bro i would have been like wait what dude with the quickness and you rocked them okay <laughs> yeah bro back then i guess if the ego was quite high as well to be honest <laughs> yeah okay but that's yeah that says something um okay but then you got to think is if if they were willing to pay 700 do you think they were going to resell them for even more or they were just um mm. potentially yeah so the main the main way it would work so the shoes would come from china they'd come Some back to straight the UK, slave shit too the right would buy them okay. and ship yeah. them back into china bullshit wait 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 so so wait repeat yes, that please because i rudely interrupted you so it's cool, bro. So China didn't have many much uh -huh. stock for these shoes, so they would uh, uh -huh. they would be made in China and be shipped to the UK to uh -huh. sell in like Adidas or something, right? Then uh, a lot of the Chinese would buy the shoes off resellers or people who win the raffles, etc. And they'd take them back into China and then resell them in China. What the hell, bro? The most <laughs> yeah, so. It was a few years ago now when uh, yeah. I was botting. So I would get like 220 odd pairs of yeah. Panda Dunks, yeah. for example. And I would meet uh, one of my one of my Chinese guys. Uh, yeah. Name was Ray. But that wasn't his real and name. He'd, he'd load them in. As... It was like uh, Chan or some shit. So. What, what? Would, would... Yeah. Maybe, bro. I don't know his real name. Yeah. I, just know him, I just know him as Ray. And... Um, We'd, we'd load them into his apartment and then he'd uh, fly them on a cargo back. Bullshit, like dude. Like wow. Yes, okay, 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 okay. Man, the, the most inefficient way possible, right? Like, bro, ship them all the way the fuck yep. to, to, to the UK to then send them all the way back, bro. Yep. And you guys just capitalized on that inefficiency. So, also, you were selling dunks too. I got some cookies and creams dunks over here too. Um, I don't know how much those are going for now, but I got I got a little bit into into that game too. So you're you're messing with the dunks. It wasn't just the Yeezys. It was anything that had margins in it, really, bro. That was that it was worth it. Or I'd ask him what he needed, uh, my guy Ray, and then he'd tell me, "Oh yeah." I how did you link up so with this many. guy? And then this is like some drug dealer shit. So, uh, no, it's, it's uh, Facebook. You know, uh, back in the day, it was Facebook back in the day. Um, and then I guess I I just. He needed a lot of shoes, and I could get a lot. Yeah, of Yeah, so, so it was it a was, match made in heaven. It was uh, yeah. easy. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. And then, so the natural progressions was the trading. And then, so what you were holding onto the shoes for a little bit longer and then your brother jumped ship and you followed him or, or what? Yeah. yeah. Basically like that. Mm. Basically like that. Okay. He's like, yo, we could do this. And how long was your brother trade? Wait. So how long did it take for you to become profitable in trading? Not actually too long, you know. So I started in, uh, I guess the start of mm -hmm. 2019, dabbled a little bit in crypto yeah. while I was still doing shoes, um, like buying uh, buying ETH yeah. and stuff on like Coinbase. Um, but near enough by the end of 2019, I was solidly So So by the end of 2019, so it's the same year? Yeah. What are you, enough, yeah, uh, okay. And how long was your, your brother trading before that? So 18 to 19, mm. he was, he okay. was basically, I believe he might have even been on demo mm. before that, to be honest. But, but yeah, but yeah. you, okay. So did he hit profitability before you did? Yeah, he's, he's got his own journey. I guess you can, you can talk. Yeah, to him so about, that's about okay. That but yeah, but yeah, but that's part of your journey, dude, because if you can, you guys are entwined because if, if, if he if he becomes profitable before you becomes profitable, all of a sudden this becomes a lot more doable. You feel me? So, so yeah, yeah, because a, a lot of this journey, right? Because I'm trying to figure out how was it that you became so pro profitable so quickly? Um, because a, a a part of this journey too is like you don't even believe that this shit is real. I mean, did you go through that? Yeah, uh, at the start, but. When when I saw the results, I, I couldn't it. ignore yeah. it. You couldn't, yeah, because neither of us went to university, mm. so it was straight straight shoes. shoes. Oh, you guys didn't trading. wait, but I thought you said that you were in in uni, college. Uh -huh. sixth form, so it's uh, I don't, how I don't it know translates. How I don't the, fucking know either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think there's like a so after our GCSEs, which finishes okay. in grade eleven, there's oh, two years in between. So where you do your a levels and then it was okay uh, straight to okay 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 so it's not like uh okay so it's college so okay let's go grade level so if it's if 11 then it will be 12 13 type shit right yeah yeah so at the end of 13 it was we oh was made, damn but you guys got a whole money, extra year money. bro fucking 13 bro we finish at, at 12 over here us um okay yeah. so you went straight to that and then you you just believed you started seeing so wait so you got into crypto and you were seeing the results so that was what 20 2019 that was around that was the second bull run right well not even the second because that was the mount gox one um long time ago uh so 2019 yeah. is that when it started running up this recent one uh, i want to say give or take right um I can't 4k when it went for like 4k more... to like yeah oh to 20 no yeah 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 yeah, so ahead, hit... sorry, sorry. yeah 4k to 20 right oh the one after that the one after that was 4k so the covid candle to that was 2020 yeah, look at the COVID yeah, candle. that was the start of the so you got in 2019 world. so this is oh yeah. you got bro 2019 was the bound that wasn't even yeah that wasn't even the bull run from 17 18 okay so 2019 yeah. is when you got in, right? And what? So you were profitable in that time? Only to, only towards the very end of 2019 mm, 20, is when I was profitable. Okay, so only towards the end of 2019. I started and lost. Uh, I started and ended up in 60% drawdown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I made what my what way up from like. there. Yeah, what did that feel like? What did that feel like for <laughs> yeah. you, bro? Do you know what? you learn from your mistakes as you go so i remember that the one thing that that completely messed me up was i was too fixated on a bias mm. and something was to me at the time was looking bullish on say the daily the 12 hour the, the yeah, yeah the four hour say and i missed that there was a massive h1 <laughs> setup i guess going against me and i was layering into positions and i was like yeah. why is this not working completely missing that out and it's uh, crazy correct. right how how easy it is for us to get fixated then, on a direction or whatever yeah so that was lesson mm, learned but okay but you you right away so you already knew in that so okay so you were able to disconnect though so that's pretty quick for you to because i know people that have been in this shit for 10 years and they don't like they don't learn that lesson that's a pretty that's a core concept what you just threw right there um 
is that the, in that yeah. there's a lesson in losing that that um and being in drawdown like that um and what do you think what do you think helped you get to that point of you knowing that um i think i had i guess i had mm -hmm. the help around me if i needed to ask anything or yo i fucked up like how do i i can swear I, i've been swearing before. the whole time <laughs> <laughs> okay cool yeah so it we was can't like, swear we're fucked yeah, because fucked um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I, it was like it was literally like that i, I had the, i had the support from people who were yeah. really profitable around me so i didn't need to again when someone's yeah. saying something to you you can listen but you're not going to fully understand yes. until you yes, f yes, up yes, yourself yes, yes. So That's I a guess key. That was you could you myself. could teach. Okay, this is a book that I was reading the other day, uh, Siddhartha, and you could teach somebody like like you can share knowledge, but you can't share wisdom, right? You you need to yeah, feel that shit. You need to live that shit to really know what it's like. For the most part, you feel me? Yeah, like yeah. the experience. You have Pain. to experience it yourself to fully learn from <laughs> the lesson um yeah, yeah i learned i learned since then I've, i i don't know i like to learn from my mistakes so you don't so i don't make them again it's something that really sticks with me it's a game um and I, i'm not really i'm i'm quite mm. disciplined i don't know um i guess it might i guess it comes from the way i was raised yes. and even religion what are you um i'm quite i'm very muslim, okay. uh, muslim so I'm very disciplined and that's probably what stops me making the same mistakes. How over funny, time, I guess. Everything informs everything. Like you, your trading is informed by the way you live your life, right? Like, well, well, the way you carry yourself everywhere informs each other. It's, it's like feedback loops that you create. And it, it's, it's cool how you can, by being disciplined in another aspect of your life, it becomes a, it becomes like a scaffolding for how to be disciplined in other areas of your life because that same resistance that you would feel to let's say eat pork or not pray at a certain time of the day is the same resistance that you're going to feel with the chart you set these rules for yourself and it's like are you going to follow them or you're not going to follow them it's the same shit whether it's religious yeah. or whether it's in the chart does that does that speak to you it does it does and it's not even that like it's something that you'll intentionally notice it's it's just automatic so like um i guess the same way you're saying you uh, pray on time is the same way i wouldn't re re recommit yeah. that same mistake yeah knowingly yeah. and it i wouldn't think that it's that's what's caused it but that's in hindsight mm, probably what it is and it's that structure because the reality the reality of the world is that the world is chaos right we create we create the structure and our lives are chaos. We create that structure. So you buy your resale business and uh, trading or whatever it is, all these ventures that you're doing, you have infinite potential to go in any which direction that you want. Right. But it's up to you to create that structure in order to channel that energy in such a way that there's a efficacy to make money. Right. To Yeah. Oh, and there goes your time management, too. It's right there, dude. Like you, you say how you want to be free of like, you want your time to be free. It's right there. You, but you literally have to carve out that time for yourself because if you don't carve it out for yourself, the world will envelop you and you'll be at the beckoning of however the fuck they want you to live your life. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, uh, something I was going to say is, um, having more free time allows you to put your energy into different things. So like even, even business wise. So like, my uh, i'm in the uk at the moment my business was registered in the uk um withdrew a lot of crypto profit in 2021 um and the uk tax mm. system here is terrible so if you're paying income tax it's anything over 100k is 45 percent. even even if you're uh doing it um for a company even it's 23 percent. maybe yeah. even going up to 25 You'd have to dividend yourself. That's taxed at seven and then 35. So it's like, if you're making a significant amount of money here, you're near enough giving yeah. half of it back. So the, the extra time that I've probably had is what then allowed me to research and look into things like Dubai, where my business is now mm. currently based. So it's, it's probably saved me a lot of yes. time. Yes, oh, no, I for guess. sure.
being able to be more well, free there's, with myself. You are the effort that you're putting in instead of it being siphoned away from you, you're you're it's it's more efficient, dude. Like you're being more efficient. Yeah, of course, dude, by extension, because if you're doing this for money, this is why you're doing it, right? Like, yeah, you want to have the time or whatever, but the reason why you're doing this is for the money. And if you're doing this for the money and there's a giant fucking hole like in your airplane that there's like money bags flying out of it, you're wasting a lot of effort. You're wasting a lot of fucking effort, dude. It's not easy to make money. So <laughs> You've got to do your very best to keep as yeah. much as it as you can, or at least enjoy yeah, it yeah, yourself yeah. rather than it flying. Yeah, yeah like, because you know it, I mean? and again, and then you know, people be like, "Oh, yeah, you got to pay your tax or whatever." But what are they doing with it? Fucking like bombing people and and like, they're or, just, like because yeah. what they're doing is is that they're fucking money laundering towards each other. You know, like literally what they're doing with our money. So. Yeah, so I don't I don't know about the US, but our UK government yeah. is awful. Enough times they've been seen um, it's sketchy, bro. It's all corrupt. Yeah, so dude. yeah, I don't want my money going yeah. to them really and truly. To I'd pay for cameras them for them to surveil you and shit, dude. It's dude, it's yeah. it's wild, right? So it's like because I've seen it's everything is fractals, right? We 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 talk about trading, and it's what it's the that same fractal that you see on the four hour, you see it on the the fifteen minute, and you see it yeah. like but. That's the reality of life, too. Everything is a fractal of a fractal of a fractal. Everything is related, right? And you you can see, like, associations. I don't know if they have homeowners associations in your country. Um, but but you have, like, an association uh, where, where they control what the houses are supposed to look like. Like, there's certain code of what it's supposed to look like, right? Or... Yeah. Or, or you got to keep it to a certain standard. And those people, they steal a bunch. Of, let's call it like the school board, right? You just school board in, in your, you have school boards yeah. in your country, I would imagine, right? Okay. So you have like the school board and dude, they're stealing a bunch of fucking money, right? And it's like, okay, that's structured. There's a lot of gray area and it's not their money and they're looking to make money. So, and they're not going to sell Yeezys. So what are they going to do? You feel me? They're going to they're gonna steal yeah. bread. And yeah, then right. you're like, wait, if they're doing it yeah. here, you're going to tell me that the same fucking dudes that are at that level aren't doing the same thing? And then it's like, okay, then it's your it's your responsibility to protect your assets, right? It's yeah, literally your... All right, I went a little bit long, bro. But that shit, yeah, that shit fucks with my head. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Um, so that saved you. Ultimately, it's time. Right. It's not even about money. Ultimately, it's about time because the money is just a facilitator. Is that fair to say? Yep. Very much fair to the, say. The, the money, the money is just a facilitator. So it's it's about protecting your time. It's about and I think trading is trading is like one of the most powerful or, or it's one of the simplest ways of making money because it's um, it's buy and sell. It's buy and sell. There's not all these other variables of like you got to fly it to China. You need these people to fucking ship it and you have to find a supplier and all of this extra. There has to be a raffle. There's a bot. There's like there's a bunch of extra steps in between there. And trading just eliminates all of that stuff. And it um, um it's just you're entirely <laughs> self-accountable. There's no one that can fuck it up besides yeah. yourself. You can't blame. And how do you how do you? Do you feel any pressure from that? Do you know what? I actually deal well mm. under pressure. So for me, it's, for me, it's all right. I, I, I'm fine with it. Of course, it's yeah. pressure. If you, if you're, especially when you're starting out, like I remember when I was starting out and um, I didn't go to university. I had to make it work. There was no other choice. Make it work or be broke. Those were my two choices. So I decided to make it work. But there's something powerful in that too, is like giving yourself that choice. Because I, I think what happens with a, with a lot of people is they, they don't have a choice. It's not one or the other. They just float. They just float around, yeah. you know? So because yeah. you had that, you had a, there's like a polar, uh, there's like a polarity to that. And you're either like, it's either I do this or I don't do this. And I wonder how much the religion has to do with that. So, because I'm saying, so you pray at intervals during the day, you do that. Yeah, that's a lot, dude. That's a that's, yeah, that's quite a commitment. 
um so so I do it with uh, I do it with push-ups. So push-ups will be in intervals during the day. So I understand what it is to fucking drop down to the floor. Okay, yeah. You get me? Like you get what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's like all right, I have to drop down to the floor. There's an energy in that, right? Um so mm-hmm. just and you uh, okay. So and you you're consistent with that? Yeah, I try to be as mm. consistent as possible. Um and I'd like to think yeah, I'd like to think it's responsible for a lot I of my discipline. So. I think so. I think so. Honest. And wh- how do you, because there's a judge, like now you have a standard to live up to and it's, it's constant with you. It's all the time. Like if you don't, if, if you don't, and, and man, that's so powerful because it reminds you that there is a God, right? Like, like, yeah, you're going about yeah. your day, but don't remember the, I mean, don't forget the infiniteness of the universe, you know? Like, if, if it doesn't have to be Allah or whatever, like, you could have your own thing. Like, yo, you're floating in a spaceship. Like, you're in fucking space right now. You think that whatever it is that you're honed into right now, you think that the 15 minute is so fucking important, but there's a fucking 12 hour, like, you got what I'm saying? Like, it, yeah, it's bro. like you're in a fucking spaceship, dude. Um, so it's humbling, right? And I like how you said that earlier, you talk about humility. Um, yeah, there's, there's a humility to that. And there's a, there's a zooming out aspect of it. And when you zoom out is when you understand the, the finiteness of life too, right? Like, yeah. Do you know what it is? Like, it's like religion. A lot of people attach money with power, but for me, money is like you said a facilitator money doesn't there's no power i feel like i feel like i'm powerless the my creator is is what decides i'm just here to play my part yeah i could see that yeah oh i like that so you man so yeah there is a humility to that because you take a lot of that because there's like a hubris that comes with money too it's like look what i did right like, look at me, look how mm. awesome I am. Look at all that I can do. But when you bow, yeah, you're literally bowing down to something else, right? You're literally bowing down to something else. And it's and it slows you down because it's easy to tunnel vision into like what you're doing right now and the game. Well, that's what it is too, is because the money is an idol too, right? Like yep, yeah, 100%. the money is the money's an idol. Um I like that. I think that has, I think that does, inf- yeah, that can't be a, I mean, this can't just be a coincidence, right? Like that we're, it can't be a coincidence. I don't think so. No I don't think so. Because you have, bro, this fucking Discord, give me a second, dude. <laughs> it's cool, bro. <laughs> I forgot to turn off my, this speaker, dude. I have a giant speaker over here, bro. And I just keep hearing, boop, 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 uh, okay. boop. Do you hear it? Do you hear it? <laughs> It, nah, it, it bullshit, past, bro. It's been driving me nuts. And I'm like, bro, I, I turned off all the... Where is this coming from, dude? Bro, it's like, have you have you got uh, yeah, MT4 yeah, yeah, on, yeah. Your, on your laptop or whatever? You yeah, know that MT4 yeah. Oh, noises? it drives me crazy, the worst dude. Of them all, the bro. little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah literally. it's crazy. And then, because I have like a bunch of PCs going. I got like one over there, one over here, another one over here. And okay. I'm, and then I have a bunch of tabs, and I'm like, where do I have this open, dude? Where do I even have this <laughs> yeah. shit open, man? Um, but I like that, man. I, I, everybody has a journey, right? And I think there are core tenants to be profitable as a trader, and and it's interesting to me how fast, and that's what I wanted to get to is like, how did you become profitable so quickly, right? And not only in because you attain profitability quickly in that uh, in the shoe business too right so that informs you too yeah. like you know how to run a business also yeah i guess so you've got yeah i guess i guess business uh, yeah. business is business <laughs> like you've got a stake and the most important thing i could like is, is i can't stress this enough it's risk management and consistency if you're risking the half a percent or one percent on an account it takes a very, very, very long time yeah. to blow that account. If you've got a winning strategy, like it's not going to happen. So I think one of the main reasons that I did acquire profitability so quickly is because there were no massive jumps. Mm. My when I, from, from, from when I went into 60% drawdown, it was slowly gathered up. And then over time is when, it went and grew and grew and grew and then it compounded. You didn't feel, it's but you didn't feel because okay, 
but because let me play devil's devil's advocate here. So cool. I, I know that there's people that as they go deeper and deeper into drawdown, it starts to ramp up. You get me? Like the 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 fears start to ramp up. And that's well, that's how people get shaken out of the market. Do you know what it but that means? When I hear stuff like that, I just think you're either over leveraged or you're not comfortable with losing yeah. what, you've, what you've got in. It's not like I, I went in. It's not like I stopped reselling. and went and put my entire net okay. worth into trading. So I started with like uh, 1K and then that went into drawdown and then okay. I bring it back and bring it back. So like I was trading is very hard when you're under the financial pressure and you have and you sort of not that you, you like need it, but where that's paying your bills, I guess. Like, you've got to be in a good place mentally yourself to make really this as easy yeah. as it can be. Because I didn't feel no real stress yeah. to make it work. Like, I, I needed to long term because yeah, otherwise I would have yeah. run out of money. But, but you give yourself space. The, you give yourself space, space to, yeah. to learn. It's funny how that's that's a theme, right? We just keep talking about space. And that's zooming, in, zooming out to the 12 hour too. Um, so, yeah, but... so you, okay, you needed to give yourself, all right. And, but what about now? Were you able to transition to, did you ever transition to just full-time or do you have other things going on also? I've been full-time trading basically since 2019. So you were able to get yourself to that place. Okay. So it is, it is a, it's like a handoff, right? It's like a gentle handoff. It's like, all mm. right, do little by little, you start to, to make that transition. And, and I think it's powerful. What you're saying is that. Yeah, a lot of people are just over leveraged. I think it's like a lottery ticket for them, right? A hundred percent. And yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. But when I first started, there weren't really prop yeah, firms. Exactly. So it was it was mainly personal capital. So back then it was FTMO and just yeah. funding talent. Um, funding talent got rugged, but FTMO was still there. And the challenges actually looked a lot mm. different than they do today. So like... One of the things was you had to do it in yeah. 30 calendar days yeah. or something like that. And you had to have 50% yeah. of them positive. And it was 10%. There was no free extensions, yeah. really. Um, 10% that's, in one month. Yeah. That's hard to do. That you brings gamble. out a, yeah, a gambler yeah, mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's why that business was yeah, so profitable. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I mean... I, I didn't really get sucked into that too mm. much. Um so for me, I was happy with the slow and consistent gains and then um, got to the bull run and, yeah, I made a significant amount so of money. So you gave yourself the space. You, you, and you gave yourself the space to fail You and, and you put down the cost of, of failure, right? You brought down the cost of failure. You are, that's what you're talking about. It's a risk management, yeah. right? You bring down the cost of failure because then that allows you the – yeah, I, th I think about it like raising my daughter and – yeah, a lot of it is patience. Well, you are raising yourself, right? Because you are, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. So you have to allow yourself that space. <laughs> yep. I mean, I've not experienced what? that one. Oh, yet, having a kid? Yeah, it's the same shit, imagine. bro. It's just you parenting yeah, yeah, yourself, yeah. dude. <laughs> literally. Literally. I, I Like, literally. Because it, I, there's certain things that I'm like, all right, I want her to do something. I'm like, bro, but you don't even do this shit. And it's like, fuck, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah literally, yourself. because they mirror back, like... <laughs> Yeah. I feel like a piece of shit a lot of times because it's like, damn, bro, like it's it's a pressure to get better quicker because there is a there's a time limit. You feel me? Like you mm -hmm. you're talking about your uh, you your past, your upbringing or whatever. And look at how dude, look, look at how beautifully that ended up. Right. I mean, people can't see your face right now because but you <laughs> but um <laughs> You uh, look at how quickly you were able to to gain profitability. And I want to say that part of that was because of the structure that your parents created for you. You get me? Like. A hundred percent. Like I don't come from yeah. a broken house or anything. Uh, I'm very close with my cousins, my family. So I guess it all plays a part to, to yeah. who you are as a person. And I guess who I am as a person yeah. suits trading. It takes a village, so. but it's. And there's yeah. different simulations. And what's dope about that is having like a close knit family like that is um, they, you know who these people are and you could tell who's for you and who's like, you know, that it's coming from a place of love. So they could be running simulations and giving you feedback or whatever. And you see how they're living their lives. And it gives you, 
it gives you like potential. It gives you models for to live by, right? It gives you models. So instead of you having yeah. to go out there and figure it all out by yourself, like you were floating around in Elliott waves and other shit for a while. Um, uh, but just having your brother to bounce the, these ideas off of allowed you to, to chunk a lot of this information. You know what it is too? And, and it's cool that you did the business with your brother too. Um, the, the, the shoe business is sometimes you feel down and the other f- person feels up and just the fact of you having that camaraderie or being able to, you know, um, uh, this, what is that called? Uh, what, fuck, what's the word? Uh, I don't know, but it's a, it's a balance that works. Yeah. Well one yeah. But, down, you, but you feed off you of each other well. because when you're, when you're talking, oh, yeah, when you're feeling down, you start to vent and like that takes off some of the pressure from you. And that person like knows what you're going through because you guys are in the same fucking struggle. You know, you guys are in the same yeah. fucking struggle. So they're going to know the right words. Maybe not exactly, but it's going to be way closer to, you know, you talking to your girl and she's like, yeah, don't worry, baby. Just keep going. And you're like, fuck, you don't know. <laughs> you got what I'm saying? Sometimes you feel even more lonely talking to yeah. certain people. Um, and it feels more hopeless. So the fact of you being able to talk to your to your brother, um, and I guess I'll do this by you saying this. Is there like a community with with what you're doing? Is it just a mentorship with you, or are you creating some type of a community too? Um, so I have a mm-hmm. private Discord. Um, not yeah. too big at the moment. Um, debating uh, doing mm-hmm. a free Telegram. That's a different um, energy. That's possibly different coming energy. in the future. The 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 thing is. You see, when people get so, I, I noticed when I first started. So when I first when I first um, started helping, it was like friends and stuff, and it was I didn't charge them, of course, but you don't take it seriously because it's like it's always yeah, taken for granted, they don't care. and they, they don't, they don't yeah. take it seriously. But if they have some financial value attached to it, all of a sudden they're dead serious That's and they want to make it. They, they value your time too. It's funny. Like, and you know what? Yeah. There's a lot of people and then they get shit on for it because they're like, Oh, I'm going to do this for free. And then you start charging people for it. Um, and then they're like, yeah. bro, what the hell? How come you said that you'd never charge or whatever, but it, it's, you go through that because you get into it initially to help people, but then you start to see that people don't respect your time. And you waste a lot of energy yeah, on don't. people that aren't even going to, they're not going to do it. They're literally not going to do it because they don't respect your fucking time. But then, like you said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just repeating what you said. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. People have high expectations when in reality. Yeah. They, they feel entitled, right? Yeah. They feel very, very entitled. entitled. It's funny. I see that in the prop firm space too. Like a lot of these guys, you'll see, I don't really deal with, with the back end at all. Actually, I tell them I don't want to deal with any of that shit. Um, but you'll see it like these people are like, oh, this and that, and it's like these guys don't own you anything. Bro, I, like, I even remember talking to Tristan, and I was like to him because I, I thought it would be that way from your customer yeah. service side of things, and some of the complaints and the emails you guys yes. get crazy. Yeah, like, what do you guys like, think this shit is, dude? Like, like yeah. that's not that's not this game. If you were trading your, own, but that's why most people don't make it right because they feel entitled. You know, like that's just, it's a fractal. If that fractal repeats itself everywhere in life, you know, it's, it's either you're coming from a place of gratitude and humility, or you're coming from a place that you feel like something's owed to you. And I think a lot of that comes from just the coddling of just, I don't know if it's the Western world. I don't know what the fuck it is. I don't, I don't know how to distinguish it because there's, it's not all Western people that we're dealing with in there, but I I could only speak from me. I think it is a large proportion, well, a large, largely, uh, I guess, uh, found mm. in the West. I, I think you're 100 percent right to do with maybe, I wonder. yeah. Sit, but then that goes into like social yeah, systems yeah, and yeah. stuff. Then like we start that, talking about the government and shit so, again, right? <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah. so yeah, nah. But you know what? It's a lot of people. I just had another dude. So I do these psychology calls in the weekends, and when we did a giveaway to get people to come in, and the guy didn't win a giveaway, and he was. Bro, he was tripping out. He's like, no, oh, this isn't fair. And it's like, dog, life isn't fair, brother. Like, I, I ended up banning yeah, him. I'm like, I, like, I don't even want you to come to these. You feel me? Like, I don't want that in the yeah. community. I don't want the energy around. It's like, whatever, dude. Like, you're lucky that you, like, I'm even doing this shit and you're getting this psychology shit for free. And you're going to, bro, 100%. like, you have to. 
So it's like, and you're in a rush to get what? So that you get a, a challenge so that you blow it? You're going to fucking blow the challenge. If, <laughs> so. Yeah, so if you have that mentality, yeah. you're going to blow the fucking challenge anyway, you know? So it's like, that's why yeah. that's why I can respect that you put a, a barrier of entry to things because you got to filter that shit out too. If you don't, res- like, nah, respect my time, dude. It is what it is. And then it's up to you to market it in such a way and put off the image in such a way that people do want to pay you for it, you know? Um, yeah. But I understand the free aspect of it too. Um, yeah, I, under- I understand the free aspect of it too because... Yeah. It's a trade-off. Like you've got people who really want to learn and don't have the the, yeah. the financial capability to put it in, but then you also get a larger it's majority, bullshit, which is just yeah. the time wasters and self-entitled people. So yeah. we go back to time, right, dude? It's all time. Yeah, it's, it's all time really and really energy. It's the time. same. Like those those things are intertwined. It's time and energy because even money is just energy. It's just it greases the grooves, right? Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's how much resistance are you going to feel to do this? Are you going to pay somebody else to do it or whatever? Um, and then you save yourself by time by extension. Um, damn, have we even talked about trading? We have. Uh, you're interesting, dude. I like. We are talking about trading, right? Yeah, we've covered. We've covered. Yeah, we've, 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 because yeah, because this is what this is, dude. This isn't about fucking trading. Like trading is trading, and it's just a vehicle. You feel me? Like because you said yeah. it a little bit earlier is it's um what is it? I think it's managing yourself. You said something to the to that extent, right? Yeah, you're not going to be able to trade unless you're in the right place and the right mind frame to trade. Trading itself yeah. is very boring. Yeah. It's boring and you don't spend a lot of time actually doing it. Most of your time is spent waiting. Most of your time is spent... Um, yeah, you're doing living shit, a life. Really. You, you spend... Mm. Yeah, you, you only really spend five minutes executing, maybe a couple minutes entering and, and, and closing your trades. Majority of time, you're yeah. just waiting. So if you're not someone that can be patient or if you're if you're someone that has gambling tendencies then trading's yeah. not going to work. Or you're going to have to go through a whole other system before you get to it being for you got what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I don't want to say that it's not for you, but you're going to have to deal with that because you didn't the way that you lived your life, you already went through these systems in order to create that core principle for you to be able to interface with the charts. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So other people yeah. might not be that far along in their journey because you, you might say like, okay, oh, yeah, you were profitable in, it, it took you a year to be profitable. Bullshit. I've been praying five times a fucking day for like 30 <laughs> years, 20 years or whatever. Like I've been putting yeah. in these repetitions of what discipline. That's a core concept, right? Uh, um, yeah. What is it? Um, risk management, right? Where, where did you learn the risk management from though? Um, well, I just knew that if I'm risking, uh, say, half a percent, one percent, and my strategy is profitable on paper, the only way I can F it up it. is by, <laughs> yeah, because if I don't follow it, it's, it's, it's trading yeah. so simple, but people make we it complicate ourselves, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah there's so many narratives. It's not like you said, you just said it right now is trading is boring, but the story that we project onto the chart, right? Isn't it's like, it's Mm. chaotic, right? I mean, that's what I was saying at the beginning. It's chaos. Mm. Like you have so many different directions to go in when you're looking at the chart. It's not, they're thinking about Dubai. They're thinking about jet skiing and with Tristan and shit. They're thinking about fucking uh, passport bros and shit. Right. So they're, they're living like, they're living this fantasy in their head and there's the push and pull of that. Right. But when you get down to the bear of it, like what you're talking about is don't risk, don't over leverage. I only put a thousand dollars into this shit. I still have my other business that I'm doing. Um, even if I were to like mess up, it's going to take me uh, like to get from, if you're risking 0.5%, you're going to be, have to be wrong a lot of times before you get to the point that you're really getting wrecked. Right. So there's yeah. a lot of um you so you're basically slowing things down, right? Like with everything, it's Yeah, it's kind of just zooming out and realizing like that you've got well, in my situation I knew I had time on my side, so I knew I could zoom out, slow it down and just focus on getting it right. If you've got your foundations right and and you're consistent, then the rest comes with time. So 
it's, the rest comes yes, with time. You're just buying that. yourself time because if you over leverage, yeah. now you just you you bit into your time. Bro, all you're doing is losing <laughs> money faster. It's, it's that yeah. simple. Yeah, because if you're over leveraging, because there's there's a there's a a, a sub communication when you over leverage. You're telling yourself that you're in a rush. And if you're in a rush, you're telling yourself that there isn't time. And if there isn't time, what does that mean? That means that you don't really believe. You feel me? Like yeah. unconsciously, you don't even believe in this shit. So you just want to get it over with quickly so that, you know, whatever it, it, it comes to you when it's supposed to when it's supposed to come come to you. And then there's an inherent if you don't believe right if you don't believe then you're not going to be able to sit with it for as long as you need to sit with it in order to get to where you need to get to does that make sense yeah 100 percent, 100 percent, 100 slow down so slow the fuck down um and and how did you okay so how, how did how did you i'm trying to figure out so how did you take that pressure off of so the the okay so when when you're you're flipping the shoes and then the margins aren't there anymore so you're starting to feel that um were you saving money all that time yeah i wasn't spending too mm. stupidly um maybe a few what were you spurging on what there, were you spurging on mainly yeah. clothes and stuff okay. and more shoes okay. um but thankfully um when i was doing shoes it wasn't me at but well, at the start just selling to the mm. chinese guys it it was a bit of both i had um, grown myself an instagram mm. page and i had a few family friends that were well connected so i was selling to like some of the richest uh boys and yeah. girls in kensington which is our like yeah. i guess beverly hills um so i was making i was making you were i was banking, making a lot yeah. of money for my age yeah. put it that way so yeah. but you were smart about it because what what caused you to say, man, is that, does that come from your upbringing to the saving aspect of it? Yeah. Just knowing where I wanted to be. So like, I remember, um, when I was buying and selling shoes and I was in sixth form, um, I was looking at the cars and stuff and I knew if I was spending all my money now, there's no chance I'm going to be able to have these mm. things in the future. Um, whereas I knew if I was sensible now and not overspending everything I've earned, um, there's a there's the right time for everything and again it's about yeah. being patient <laughs> i don't yeah, think i can yeah, stress yeah. it enough literally about being yeah, patient man. but it's but that's what i'm trying to get at like how the fuck where does this patience come from um because i, I know that some people are more geared to, okay so how about this how about this question um was there ever a point in your life where you felt impatient um, school as a kid when I, yeah, maybe in school, I wanted to, yeah, in school, I was um, impatient. And I guess, I guess shoes, reselling shoes taught me a lot of patience. So I'll give you a good mm -hmm. example, actually. There was a time where stores would do first come, first serve yeah. releases, right? And they'd be like, this time, this is when you've got to come and you've got to queue yeah. up for the shoe. And there were multi, maybe one or two times. I'd have to, it would be raining outside. I'd spend 24 hours out of the store to get nothing. Oh, I, I guess it comes yeah. from things like that. The, uh, dealing with disappointment. A time before, yeah, like before school, before uh, sixth form had started, I was at JD Oxford Street, which is our yeah. like city centre, trying to get a wristband to buy them before school, come back and then go to school. So it's like, I guess, I guess shoes is what originally taught me the patience I needed. Yeah. Okay. That's so. That was your vehicle. That's or one of your vehicles. Okay, because you were still in school, and you had to, you because people just make excuses. It's like, okay, I'm gonna be in school. I'm not gonna be able to do this. But you figured out how to carve yourself. It's funny because that's what I used to do with the gym. I used to get up like at five in the morning or whatever, go to the walk to the gym, mm -hmm. work out, come back home, shower, get ready for school, then walk to to school. And that's like a lot of extra for what to work out. Like, what are you doing, dude? Right? Yeah. It's realizing what you want and doing oh. anything to get it, knowing it's not going to be handed to you. That's what it is, right? And then we go back to the entitlement yeah. aspect of it. 
now we yep. circle back to entitlement. So maybe that's where a lot of this entitlement comes from. Is I want, yeah, I wonder how much. So is, is your pops in in your life? Okay. Yep. Okay. Very close. And, Very close. And so you're, you, I would imagine that your pops put down some of that that entitlement, right? Yeah, hundred percent. I know, I know things don't come easy, and I know you're not mm. owed anything. You have to go and get it yourself. I've always known that. Especially, I've known I've wanted a nice life for myself. Um, freedom again was one of the biggest things that I wanted growing up. Um, making as much as I did with shoes was what showed me it was possible to live differently from anyone else. Like I was in sixth form, selling shoes, earning more than what a blessing, a lot of my bro. teachers. So, yeah, thankfully. I learned lessons young. Yeah, but you, man, I wonder how much I keep, I uh, go back to the prayer. I wonder how much of that is just from, because you know, you have to be mindful of your time um, in order for you to get down and pray. Because it has a specific time that you have to pray too, right? Yep. Early in the morning, sun, sunrise, uh, middle of the day, uh, afternoon, evening, and then. At night. Damn, I'm failing. I like that, man. I, I Yeah, I'm failing, dude. Because there's. Yeah, there's there's certain aspects of my life and, and even with my child, too, um, because there's a reason why there's religion around, too. You know, it isn't just opium for the masses. Like, that's what they want to tell you. Um, but that's mm. because then the government becomes a fucking right. But there's that competition between the state and, yeah, but <laughs> and religion. They try that. They, they try and um, they try and remove that's what communism. Religion, does, I, yeah. I feel like. Yeah, they try and remove religion, and actually, it's it's what um, allows society, I believe, to function a lot better. You find like, I don't know, personally, I feel like religion's taught me to be close to my family. It's taught me, it's taught me good moral values um, for myself. So I can't say anything sort of negative to do with that. Yeah, but there's other, yeah, because there's other story. All right, so I'm not gonna fucking convert people. So. <laughs> But there's something, but you, yeah. you know why it's interesting to me? Because I go back to the push up. So it's me doing push ups, and there's other dudes in the, in the chat, and we're checking in and we're counting repetitions. Um, and I see that parallel between the religious aspect of it because um, I'm really big into this book, The Power of Now. Um, and it's about you being present in the moment. Like the future doesn't exist. The past doesn't exist. It's really only the, this present moment. And every time that you have to get down on your knees, you can't do anything else. You have to pause and you have to like humble yourself. Like or I bow down. I, 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 I bow down to the powers that be that, that just chance. Like, I don't fucking know anything. Right. You have to humble yourself. Yeah. You have to you have to pause. But there's also like a time management aspect of it. There's 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 so much there's so much to that. And I think I I wonder how because maybe there's people that are listening to this that aren't religious or or maybe not maybe they are religious but they don't have that practice because I, I like that part of uh I like that part of your religion that 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 discipline aspect of it and that time aspect of it and I think also money too like. Is that involved? That that I, I feel like there's even percentages and shit in the in the for charity. For, yeah. for charity but I think I had to talk to some dude from Lebanon, and he was explaining to me how there's even. Bro, I don't remember. Um, but it's a little bit more. It's a little bit more strict. Um, okay, what about your dad? Was your dad a business owner, or is? Yeah, my dad, my dad, my dad did own um, businesses when he was he was younger. Sold them uh, to, I guess, have a nicer house for for us. He would um, spend a lot of his money um, so that we could go away with our cousins mm. and stuff like that. So I've had a I've had a nice childhood. So he would okay. So he would send you away to just to hang out with your peoples. But was that? But but he's nine to five. Did he have a business of his own? Yeah, so he he yeah he had a few businesses. We had a uh, he had an apart he had a few apartments in Dubai, um, and he ran a local business in the oh, UK as well. So. Okay, so you had something to mirror. Hmm. You had something. Yeah, so that's that's what I'm saying. I know things don't come easy. He was working nine to five at the same time, and a lot of his like he would he would spend to make sure we could all go as a family away together with our cousins and stuff. So. 
he, I would see him working long hours mm. and I would see him using them and prioritizing, I guess, our family. And yeah, I guess the way I was raised is what is what made me realize what I need to do from a young age. Yeah, I, w- I wonder because I see, I guess, we're, yeah, we're looking at the entitlement aspect of it, right? Because, and, and I think that's a core principle in trading too, because I think people think that they're just going to, it's going to be a year, dude. You got, you got this, like, you're going to be profitable right away. But there's that like, nah, bro, like, that's not, that's not how it works. And, and I think that one of the shortcuts for shortcut in quotation, but you were actually living it this whole time. Um, is seeing your father and what that sacrifice look and would he was it just you seeing it or did he point it out to you no not not necessarily maybe maybe when i was more maybe when i was a lot he would point out to you but not at the time maybe he'd be uh, he'd, he'd be more he'd, I'd be more mm. aware of it I should say I, t- I tell my kid but you don't realize yeah? these things when you I tell my kid <laughs> I'm like hey don't yeah. get it twisted bro I'm I'm driving a, a two hours right now bro like you better appreciate uh, just in case um, just in case she doesn't have those powers of observation that you do so I put that shit right there in her face <laughs> yeah. but there is there, there, there is something to that because then I guess it gives you a a, a more – you brush up a reality a lot quicker, right? Yeah. You you, you brush up a reality a lot quicker as to what what it actually – yeah, well, that's – I mean, yeah, I'm just parroting what you just said, right? Um, it, you you brush up with the, with the reality of what it takes. Um, man, but when the fu- – okay, but I, I still didn't get that answer. When were you – when weren't you patient though? When when did you not have patience? Because you said the the shoes, but you were also patient when you were standing in the rain or whatever. Like when did you come to that? Yeah, but I wasn't enjoying oh, okay. that. That's what taught me I had to be mm, patient. If yeah. that makes sense. Before that, I was probably impatient with every day. I had um, a bit of a temper yeah. as well when I was younger. So I guess the shoes is what taught me to have mm. that patience. And then by the time it came to when I was ready to be trading. Yes, I was profitable in about a year, but I was prepared Dude, for it to have gone a lot longer than that. Yeah. It's just, it's just that's how it works. You out. were prepared to sit in the rain and eat shit and not even get anything, right? Like, yeah, oh man, yeah. because that's what the trading is. The trading is the exact same thing. Literally the exact same thing. You get into yeah. a trade, you did everything right. You did everything right. You stood in the rain. You got your arm banned. You're chilling. And then you go to school, right? You have 12-hour chart, and you're sitting there, and it's supposed to work out the way that you want it to work out. And then you get there, and yeah, but I bet you some people throw fits. So what made it so that you – did you throw fits at the beginning? Did you get pissed off, and you're like, wait, who am I mad at? Did you have any of that? Of course. So that's what I'm saying. I did. So the first time I went to get wristbands yeah. at 3 a.m. before school, I did okay. not get a wristband. The guy was no joke putting it on my wrist, and I got shoved. Oh year old me got shoved out of the way at three a.m. and I had to go home with nothing. And I was so pissed. I went to school. I was probably the moodiest guy, but I was like, "Okay, patience." And that's. What but where did me. you get that? I guess that. Yeah, but where did moment. you get that mantra right there that you told yourself, "Patience"? <sighs> you feel me? I don't know. You have no choice. You do it. Nah, what there's always... Do, well, to you, okay, but we go back to that, is to you, you made it binary, right? It's like either this yeah. or that. So you had already come to that place in your mind where it's either eat shit and lose or eat shit and win, right? Yeah, I've, I've always been like that, I guess. I've done... I, I played sport oh. my entire life, football, cricket, tennis, so... Maybe as early as from when I was growing up, but for me, it's always sink or swim, and I choose to I swim gotta every ask time. People, bro, I fucked up. I should have asked you from the beginning. So you did a sport that is fucking big, brother. That is, yeah, yes. I did multiple. Okay, multiple dude, sports. I should. I, I, I'm gonna have to put this in my questions or some shit, bro. Actually, I haven't even <laughs> looked at my questions, which I, which I think is a good thing because I'm 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 really engaged in what it is that you're talking about. Um. The sports and 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 this goes back to the 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 praying aspect of it is 
you have to pause and you have to be present. Your body's always in the present moment, right? Like your brain can go to yep. the past and you could uh, like, you could live in this illusion of a future or whatever your body. If somebody's right in front of you with a baseball bat and you're about to get wrecked, like you're not going anywhere. Your mind could go wherever it wants, but your ribs are going to get cracked. Yep. You feel me? That's the reality yep. of your body. Your body fucking lives in the now. Right? Mm -hmm. So when, you got to stop and pray. You're getting into them now. When you're in, when you're in a sport, you're living in the truth, right? Because your training comes to mind. Like, did you train the way that you needed to? How fast can your legs actually carry you? What's your eye hand coordination like? Like, these are all things that you have to deal with and you have to deal with, uh, the expectations of where you wish you were. On, and what you are compared to other people and then w the output that you yep. could actually put out. Does, it, does that make sense? A hundred percent. So you're faced with reality. And yeah, go ahead, of, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, you sort of, you, I don't know, like, I guess, yeah, I guess, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I've lost, I've lost you're, you're, you're humbled. Yeah. You're humbled. You you live in truth. That's truth, bro. Nobody gives a fuck about how hard you trained. Like nobody cares. All they care is like, can you um, execute or not? Right? Do you have that potential yeah. or not? Did you do the work that you needed to do or not? And it's it's no bullshit. You know what? And again, yeah, again, it comes back to self accountability. Maybe that's why I've always been self accountable. Mm. A lot of my supports were individual tennis is individual yeah. swimming was individual. Oh, you did apart. swimming too. So. Was the other yeah, one that you so said after you said swimming and you said something else? Tennis, I, I did when I was younger. Tennis, swimming, cricket, and football. And football. Oh, so you did a bunch of okay. That's and and were you naturally inclined towards that, or did your parents push you? My parents made sure, uh, like I could do all of them. <laughs> so. Yeah, I was I, I was really supported as a child. I, I'm not gonna lie. So, okay, um, but then you know people are listening to this like, bro, my house fucking sucks. My parents are assholes. But there is, okay, but this ties into what I said earlier about being a parent, right? Me being a parent, what did I say? It's you have to parent yourself, right? You have to parent yeah. yourself. So this is like right now you're giving all of the you're giving off all the sauce right? You're, you're literally giving away all the sauce. Like, look, I made it in a year. I was able to be profitable, right? And this is how, because it's about the person that you become in the process, right? It's, it's not about trading. It's about the person that you become in the process, because at the end of the day, you see the charts as you are, not how they actually are. Because you said it, it's trading is fucking, uh, it's boring, right? So you're what, if it's boring and it's not boring to you, then what does that mean? What's the only like, what's the only variable here? It's you. Yeah, you, it's yeah. you, right? So then you have to be able to build yourself up as a man, as a person, for all you ladies, the three or four that watch this, um, you have to build yourself up to the point where you can get to that boring part. Does that make sense? So, yeah, yeah go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. I've been talking a lot of shit, bro. These boys are going to be mad that I'm bro, talking so much. I can't lie. I even forgot what I was going to say. I, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Pressure's on me. But I like pressure too, dog. You, you, like, you said it earlier that you like pressure. I love pressure. Yeah. I love the pressure because that's the game. When we're fucking up, if you could see it from such a place where you're at a disadvantage and you see these other guys making it, right? Just like a sport. It's like, look at this fucking guy pushing. Why can't I do that? Right? Yeah, I guess yeah, the FOMO. What can I, well, yeah, FOMO's part of it. But it's like, and, and there's that Mike, um, it's a custom model quote because that's how he trained uh, Mike Tyson. But it's like um, fear is like fire, right? Um, fe yep. if, it's if what feeds you, you. It can, yeah, but you could use it to cook. You could use it to disinfect. You could use it to all types of shit. But if you let it get out of control, it'll burn your fucking house down. It'll kill you. You yeah. feel me? It'll literally kill you. So that FOMO, it's like a... You got to be very careful about how you play with it, right? 
Um, and you need to yeah. know where to channel it into your life. And that's you being your own parent. It's like, so yeah, cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to like, like you, don't, this isn't about religion. This isn't about sports. This isn't about, it's about how to be the best version of yourself and what are the vehicles to get there? Yeah. Your parents, um, you were lucky, right? In the way that your parents raised you, that it, they gave you the, yeah. They gave you the structure. They gave you the scaffolding for you to be able to put yourself in those those places. Um, I come from a more chaotic background, so I can really, I can really appreciate the power of what your parents did for you. Because as I grew up, I, I didn't even know that this, I'm like fuck discipline. Although even though I went to the gym and all this other stuff, but there was a bunch of things that I just yeah. went off of my talent. But then. I had to be my own parent. And I think that's what it is with a lot of people that are watching this. We have to be our own parents and we need to teach ourselves. We have to create those vehicles to create that discipline, to create that belief, to create that structure for us to then be able to, I don't know, uh, to, to be able, able to thrive to and succeed in the way that, to be able to thrive yeah. and, and, and succeed. Yeah. I, I, I like this. I like where we, uh, I feel like we could do another one of these. Um, I'm sorry if I spoke too much. I was really, uh, That's yeah. cool, bro. it's, so it's, cool. um, because I see you have, it's, it's, it's very interesting to me that you, a year because it's a year. Oh, this guy's a fucking maverick. This guy's a superstar. And it's like, no dude, you've been trained for this dude. Yeah. You've been trained for this fucking shit. Um, the sport, right? How did you, did you want to do it or, or was it your parents pushing you to do it? No, they'd always, if I didn't want to do it, they would say, then why, why are we, why are we doing it? It, it, it had to be me mm. that wanted to do it. And then they would see that and they'd encourage me. But do you ever want to quit? Sense. Sometimes, I guess, when things get tough, but then again, when you're enjoying something, you, you're going to keep doing it, really. I was good at what I was doing, so the majority of the time I was enjoying mm. it. But was there any moments that they needed to like talk you out of it, of quitting? Maybe mm. once, maybe once with, I think. It might so that was towards the end, football was towards the end? I mean, not the end, and the what of your uh, life, <laughs> of your career. No, it was, no, no, no. Uh, I guess the sports of career, the sports yeah. that I continue doing. So, like, I stopped doing. I actually stopped doing football at mm. the earliest. Um, stayed more towards cricket, Asian yeah, background, yeah. I guess. Um, yeah, and cri I guess cricket and swimming were the two that I lost. So they were the two of the last ones mm. that I gave up. And what you? What made you stop those? Um, well, I still swim yeah. all the time on yeah. holiday and stuff. So um, I guess never really gave up. And even cricket, now I just take now I take my younger brother yeah. to the games. So mm. yeah, I guess. So I guess, so, I guess that's it. So you didn't, you didn't have to, you, man. But that's okay because right now I'm at a place that it's like okay, how much of it is being pushed on you, and how much of it is from a lot of it is just from inside of us too, right? From just our, like our genetic makeup. Yep. Um, yeah, hundred. Because you have to also want it, and and that that want can't be, it can't really be taught, right? No, it has to come from yourself. If you don't want to do something, you're not going to do it. You're not going to enjoy it. You're not going to thrive in it. You're only going to thrive in something that you want to do, and you're going to really put an effort into it. Um, I guess you're yeah. only going to put an effort into it if you really want to do it. Um, and yours was you just want to get paid. You want to get that cheddar. Yes, I like. Uh, freedom. I wanted freedom. You're gonna say you're gonna say the something ability. right now, dude. Don't forget. It's the ability to do what you want when you can. To, to the ability to when do you what want, you want yeah. when you want yeah, to do it. Yeah. That's more more even than money is the freedom. Freedom just. The money just buys the freedom that you can have. Money alone, again, like anything, yeah. is boring. That's why so many rich yeah. people are depressed because you've got nothing around you. Like, I've got my family around me, which enhances having money. It, it enhances the benefits. Okay. Um, 
I feel like I feel like we could do another one of these. Um I, yeah, I think, I think we could do another one of these. So, I mean, we're at 115 right now. Um you, you know what actually you know what I'm going to tell you too which um I was fucking pissed off yesterday. Um I was really pissed off yesterday and it was just from a lack of not managing my life. Um just you know you you get lost you get lost in things, right? And I'm like, "You know what? Yeah. I don't want to interview this guy with me being this pissed off because he deserves to like to get that respect you got what i'm saying like like i wanna i wanna respect um your time and i'm glad that i did i'm sorry i'm sorry that i um what is it that i rescheduled on you um yeah yeah but i'm 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 glad because it was you have a you have a very interesting story and i think you gave me a very um uh, it's funny because it seems like i'm just over here just tutoring myself like fuck these guys i (laughs) (laughs) um but there's different I keep coming back to the sports too, you know, like I keep coming mm-hmm. back to the sports. It's so powerful. The body is like a, it's like a shortcut to learn all of these things. Um, and now I'm getting a lot of the family and you know what Riz, you, there's a lot of similarities between you and Riz too. Um, so you, do you know him? Do you guys, um, I follow him, you follow but you, me. Yeah. I've not spoke to him, but I'm yeah, sure we'd I get think, on. I think if... I gotta I gotta figure out how to do this, man, because there's so many cool people that I'm meeting from this. Um that I, it would be and people that are trying to help, um that it would be a shame to not uh help you guys push each other forward. You know what I'm saying? Um there's yeah. enough people trying to fuck each other over. Um and I think it's our it's our imperative. Well, you said that you were more on the the charity side or whatever. I think like us that we want to be yep. of service. Um, I think it's it's imperative for us to 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 make that. All right, wait. So, is there anything that you want to leave the the people with? And we'll do another one. I'm down. Um, I guess if I had like a a few tips, it would be like make sure you've got good people around you. Make sure you're ready mentally yourself and um don't get too attached to the monetary value of things you've got to prioritize sort of your your journey and being ready to make what you're going to make you have to be physically ready for it it won't come otherwise submit right submit to the process submit to time and give yourself the space right give yourself the space don't over don't over leverage uh ladies and gentlemen um all right beautiful hey man i appreciate you i want to have your brother on too um to see to see what's popping um but hey man thanks for coming on